Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pat Magley. I'm the director of Heroes Camp, visionary of Heroes Camp, and a person of prayer. And I want to talk today about devotion. And this thing has fallen off so bad in Christianity that um, people have Bibles at home that are unread. They have Bibles in the pews at church that are unread. And people go to church. But that's not the way that's supposed to take place. It's written about prayer. It's written about fasting. And it's written about almsgiving. It's, it's written about thanksgiving and worship and the kind of things that we don't do, but we expect results. It's just insane. And I am always uh, enamored of standards, and I study standards, and fasting and prayer is a standard. And people live in trends. And so uh, that's been eliminated because fasting and prayer is not, it's not trendy. It's kosher with God because God says so, but it's not trendy in the Christian culture anymore. I seen two girls on U.S. Open today, and one girl was tatted all the way from here, all the way up her arm, and I felt, I, I didn't feel good about it, you know, not because of the tattoos, but because they looked to be like they were lesbian, and two tried to become one or maybe to try to become a different one. Those are things that are not good. They're not good. And I'm not judging those people as much as I'm saying that it's not pleasing in the sight of the Lord and it's got our country in dire results right now and in dire straits. We're in a bad way with the Lord. You know, you can be good with the president, you can be good with religion, and you can be good in education and terrible in spiritual things and not even know it because you really haven't personally investigated. Christianity is not hereditary. I taught it to my daughter. I took time. I demanded that she read. I demand, and sometimes it wasn't always that much fun, but when she gave and she yielded to the will of God, it changed her life. And now she's doing the same with her husband and her children. And they're getting it over to another generation. That's the standard that you teach it to your children and to your children's children and to a generation that's so far off. I'm not being a hater, but I'm not going to let nobody hate on the Lord Jesus Christ either who died on the cross for me. And he suffered. He suffered tirelessly the whole time that he in the earth. He came to the earth to suffer. And they wanted to make him an earthly king, but his kingdom was not of this world. Christianity is not hereditary. Many children have infidel parents. People go to church, they're infidels. If you're not reading the word, you ain't fasting, you ain't daily pressing into God, hmm, you're an infidel. And they go to church with parents that are infidels. And then one day, because the parents took the children to church, they can't believe out how the children turned out. That's amazing to me. And it's a life without devotion. Their parents walk is in idle wind. There's no wind of the spirit. It's idle. There's, there's no motion in it. There's no movement in it. There's no acceleration in it. It's not upwardly mobile where the Holy Spirit can show us things to come and how to navigate and things that are going to go on. But everything has got to come through uh, television and everything has got to come through some other mechanism other than revelation, which if it ain't revelation, I probably believe it's a lie or partial truth, which is even more dangerous. Uh, the parents walk, in, it is idle while, and it's not even worthy of notice. Mm -hmm. Christ's ignorance in the house of God has made the artillery non-existent, the artillery of the word of God, uh, the artillery, uh, artillery of the sword of the spirit. Fasting is the artillery. Worship is the artillery. Thanksgiving, dancing is our artillery. Praying in tongues is artillery. This is a militia that we're in. We're in a military, and our fight is not with other human beings. Our fight is for other human beings fighting the devil. And, and I think that we've, these things are so simple to me, but it seems to me that we're so far removed from it. And I don't really, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with it. That's why I'm speaking about things that disturb me. I, I, I like I don't want to be off, but I do want to be disturbed.
Christianity is not embraced. Christianity not embraced is nothing. Unless you embrace fasting, unless you embrace the Word of God and read the Word of God over and over and read through the Word and, 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 and highlight things and look at it and pray it out and learn how to, to use it as your playbook and play all five positions that there's five, five all positions. Play, play everything that you can play. Christianity not embraced is nothing. A superficial practice practices a poverty of experience. A superficial practice practices poverty of an experience. You're not going to have much experience with the Lord by just going to church. It ain't going to happen like that. Mm -hmm. Truth not obeyed should leave you in a sense of danger. When the truth is not obeyed, you should be concerned that you're out of order with God and that you could die and be, and le and be left in eternity without heaven and be left in hell. Truth not obeyed should leave you in a sense of danger. If you don't feel the way you are feeling, if you don't feel the way that you know you're feeling, then you're already too far gone. You're just, you're just gone. Let me read to you out of the book of Joshua. And there's some promises that God wants to uh, motivate us and, and through our devotion with him to feel like we can get there. In Joshua 18.3, it says, then Joshua asked him, how long are you going to wait before taking possession of the remnant of the remaining land? The Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you. God has given us promises. God has given us possessions. God has given us things for the purpose of ministry, for the purpose of ministering. Joseph was the distributor and he distributed things. He had to go through, he had to go through hell for uh, uh, 13 years being betrayed, being thrown in the pit, being sold into slavery, being lied on, and being in the penitentiary. 13 years. But when he came out, he learned what he was supposed to learn, and he lived to a good old age of 130. And he was in charge of everything that Pharaoh had uh, uh, for, for the land. And it, uh, everything except the Bible says, except what was in Pharaoh's mouth, except the food that he was currently eating. He, he learned how to be over everything. He went in and possessed the land. And there was a darkness, but there was light in Goshen. And he was able to distribute. He distributed to his, his enemies, which was his own family. And he made sure that there was enough. And then there was peace. We, we can't wait on, we can't wait on, everything else is too slow. The bureaucracy, the red tape, the, uh, the politics of it all, the religion of it all is too much. Now faith, now faith. It's difficult to interpret eternal things in time paradigms. We've got desires of our heart that we want to do. I, I would like to go over here and do this. I'd like to go over here and do this. But what's God saying? What about our time frame? And we ain't got but just a little bit of time. The Bible calls it a breath. We don't have but a moment. We don't have but a moment. Let us learn through devotion those things that are most necessary for us to do so we can get an appetite for the eternal, so we can shift up the time clock because the time clock doesn't last long. Prayer promotes the spirit of devotion. Of, 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 excuse me. Prayer promotes the spirit of devotion. Devotion furthers prayer and helps drive prayer home to the object that it sees. So as you fast, as you pray, your eyes are going to get open. The Lord will show disciplined people and diligent people and obedient people and holy people things that he's not going to show other people. They'll let it fall to the ground. Samuel had promises and every time he prophesied, not one of his promises fell to the ground. Not one word that he prophesied didn't come to pass. Why? He was devoted and he was born into a hierarchy of devotion because his mother was devoted because she was barren. And she birthed him by being devoted. We must birth change in our country. We must birth change in this world while we have time. Our standards have fallen away, but they're still biblical standards. We're living by trends and it's a duping. It's a duping. There's a, there's a doping, but there's also a duping. And it's not healthy. Don't think I'm hating on nobody. When I talk about that, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about I'm hating on the devil. The Bible says, uh, 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 hate all that's evil. Prayer, th prayer thrives in the atmosphere of devotion. People live to pray. The attitude of mind 
and state of mind and a state of heart implied in devotion to make perfect effectual, uh, 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 a perfect and effective in reaching the throne of grace. It's so important that through devotion, we'll go higher, we'll go higher. And you got to pay attention because there's just a little things that God will do to let you know that he's pleased with you. There's some things that you can just wake up in the middle of the night, had a great dream. You could have had a bad dream. You know what I'm saying? But you can talk to God and God will respond. He's not, a, it's, it's not just a Wednesday or a Sunday thing. I don't know where we're getting off, but it's, it's not a good place. It takes humility to be devoted to spiritual things. Because it's fun to go, it's fun to go to the game. It's fun to go to the movie. It's fun to go to the mall. God seemed like he shut all that down. But I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to have fun at the expense of my devotion. I, I, I don't, I, I'm talking about my own soul. And for those that I minister to, uh, to around me and influence and father, I want them to be sober and clear about this little thing that we got called life that has such significance after it's over. And if we're not devoted, it, it's not going to be what you want. Believe me, it's not. Um, so the spirit man, all things are spiritual. The fight brings the fruit. Let's take over to a Numbers chapter number 13. And we'll start in verse uh, number 27. There was reported to Moses, and this is where uh, they were entering into the promised land. And there's nothing like fruit that you went and got from the land, that you went and got it. It's not still in the land. You went past the giants, you went past the Anakim, and you went in, and you went in there because you were devoted. He said this in verse number 27. This was the report to Moses. We entered the land you sent us to explore. It was indeed a bountiful country, a land flowing with milk and with honey. There's a country above our country. And it's in a low heaven. And it hasn't been reaped for a long time. And there's so many things there right now that we can pull through fasting and prayer down into this earth realm. Because we have a more rapid birth rate of children. Because we have people that are irresponsible sexually. They don't want to take care of their kids. They are not thinking about it. And they came up pregnant by accident. And now they feel the irresponsibility because maybe they grew up in the same thing. It's not healthy. But their provision is up there. And if you're devoted, you can pull it into the earth realm. I've been doing it for 30 years. It works. Being devoted and fasting and prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We entered the land that you sent us to explore. And indeed, a bountiful country. A land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful. And the towns are large and fortified. We saw the giants there. The descendants of Anak. The Amalekites lived there. Everybody lived there. But the fight brings the fruit. And that's when men bring, believe. When you're able to go behind enemy lines and bring stuff and be able to share it with people, they should be inspired to do the same. They should be inspired to, 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 to put their life down and pick up the life of the cross and to pick up uh, the life that Christ has died for us, to, that he already scripted for us. And that shouldn't be no kind of big deal at all. The problem with this is that you must bring your heart to devotion. Many today, they don't train in sports, but they play. And they swear they're devoted, but without devo devotion, you're heartless. And another word for heartless growing up is, when I was growing up, people were gutless. They didn't want to train. They didn't want to run extra. They didn't want to do extra suicides and extra uh, laps or, or just run miles or extra road work, extra rope work, a jumping rope, extra rim touches, extra working on other drills and things that would help them and help, help them win, help them help them get the ball at the end of the game, at the end of the year. We are surely headed towards the end of the year more rapidly than we've ever experienced before in the history of this world. I mean, it's already September the 3rd. And I mean, it's, I, I, I'm just saying, I'm giving a warning 
Come on, come on, we can do this, but we got to humble ourselves. And I'm not giving this warning out of fear, but I, I do fear the Lord, and that's why I'm giving the Lord the, this warning, because I feel like that's what God is saying. It's not an easy task for the lips to try and pray while the heart is absent from it. It's not easy. If your heart ain't in there, you won't, it won't be, it'll be impossible to pray. But if you'll bring your heart there, you'll begin to practice your devotion and begin to establish it as a standard in your life. That's what the Lord is looking for. He resides, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth, looking for somewhere he can show himself strong. Most of the church today, like I said, is 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 they're heartless, they're gutless, they don't care about others. They, they, and I wish I was on your nerves when you do something about it. Most Christians today have never prayed an hour in tongues. They never fasted three days. I, I'm not getting off this. You know what I mean? I think this is what God is, is saying to this region. You know, we go to church, but we don't participate. If you went to church and you was trying to pull, if your pastor is a praying man, you should be trying to pull something out of him. Not just something that he studied or something that he was going to give, but some of the Holy Ghost that might be in there. We need answers for difficult problems, to violence. We need answers to corruption. We need answers to disease. We need answers for our children. We need answers for our seniors. We need answers for people coming to our country so we don't end up being an oppressor when we say we're the home of the free and the land of the brave. I think I wonder about some of them standards that we used to claim. And when I see now that our murder rate is higher than anybody else in the world, our runaway rate is higher than anybody else in the world. And I'm not talking about runaway children. I'm talking about runaway parents. In Revelation. And, and, and let me say this about basketball, tennis, or church. Playing by habit is a bad habit. Going through the motions, playing by habit. Prayer, praying by habit. Not really pressing in. Not taking time and press and press and press. Over in Revelation chapter 4, and I'll be through. I hope I'm getting on your nerves. Love will get on somebody's nerves. Jesus said, unless you drink my flesh, unless you eat my blood, eat my Flesh and drink my blood, you're none of his. In other words, he was saying, do it his way. It's the way that's already prescribed. It's a standard way. It's not a trendy way. It's, it's, the, it's not a way that's going to please everybody. Many, the Bible says, left him that day and followed him no more. Many. Most actually. Come on. Revelation chapter 4. This is devotion right here. Each of these living beings had, we'll start in verse 8, each of these living beings in Revelation 4, 8 had six wings and their wings were covered all over with eyes inside and out. They had revelation, eyes are perceiving, eyes are perceiving, perceiving and the mind of the spirit, the, the eye of the natural man must be connected to the mind of the spirit so we can see spiritual things. We get revelation, insight. Uh, we feel uh, uh, certain things that are moving and shifting. And, and, and when I was talking about being trendy, you can see and if the trends are moving away from the standard, begin to pray and bind that thing from trying to take place. Covered all over with eyes inside and out. Day after day, that's devotion. Night after night, that's devotion. They keep on saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God, the Almighty One. Who was, who is, and who is still to come. I challenge us today. I challenge myself. I'm inspired to be dissatisfied. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a satisfaction in dissatisfaction. I know there's more in me. I know I got to go higher. I know I got to go longer. I know I got to go. I, I, I must go more frequent. I'm a, a morning, noon, and night. Because the one that who was. And who is and who will be is calling me. He's calling you. He's calling everybody on this planet. There's a difference between those that are wicked and those that are lost. Someone are predisposed to no matter how much they hear, no matter how much they see the hand of God trying to draw them, they're not fit to relent. They're not fit to repent. But there are those that are lost, and this goes out to you. Really, this goes out to the remnant. And I want to challenge you. Keep on doing. Bring more. Bring more death. Die easier. Die longer. Die daily. 
This is Pat Magley. I'm signing off. I just want you to be where you ought to be when you ought to be there and be all up in there doing what you ought to be doing and wake up and do it tomorrow and call it a breakthrough. Bless you.